My name's Peter Coates. I'm a stone carver. I have a studio in Broby in Rydale and at the moment I'm carving a series of marble gloves. I haven't carved marble for about 20 years. This project has reinvigorated an interest and what I enjoy about this is discovering the form in quite an engaging material. Carving is a process of removal to find the, the object that you're, you're wanting to make. I mean, it starts out um, from, well, bigger blocks than this. This has been cut down. Um, this, would, this would make me two gloves, <coughs> really. Um, so I cut it down with an angle grinder. I mean, I use a pneumatic hammer which is air powered. It's not a new tool. Victorians used these, so it's not, it's not a cheating. It's not, not um, modern life, making life easier. Briefly, I mean, I, I, I'll use this as a, a point in the pneumatic hammer, uh, which is a roughing out tool designed really to remove larger volumes of material. Kind of traditionally, that you, you go through, through the, I mean, in carving, these are, these are sort of like um, small scale masonry tools for, for, for sculpture, so they're just they're smaller really. But you know, and, and you can um, start to cut lines in. It's three dimensional drawing really, it's, it's a little bit like three dimensional dot to dot if you're doing um, a face, um, you know, and you're working around the eyes. You, uh, I draw what I'm carving onto, so, so you'd, you'd rough the, the kind of the, the orb of the eye surface, you'd kind of create that surface, because you're always working back. It's a bit like something being covered in sand and gradually that being blown away to reveal the object. Physically, if there's something on the surface that you want to delineate this kind of action, it's called chasing what you do when you carve a letter. When it's finished with a, a tool, you just get the chisel marks in it. So this is a, a little shaped file called a riffler. Um, that's a big riffler. These are die makers rifflers, which aren't rasps, they're files. These are for metalworking, really. Abrasive papers brings the surface. It makes it more reflective when it's like that. It's, it's non-reflective. When it's like that, it's start, starting to different surfaces are starting to play with light. Right, so well, we've been to my studio and seen the carving work that I've been doing there. Uh, so we're now at St Michael's Church in Coxwold and uh, there are some interesting bits and pieces that I'd like you to see. Well, we're inside uh, the church now and um, just as you come in, have a look up and look at the ceiling, look at the carved bosses above you. There's plenty to see. Okay, well, uh, you, you saw me working in my studio on a tiny little piece of marble making this little delicate, intricate thing. This, in effect, is the same material. It looks like Italian marble, but it's colossal. It's, it's, a, it's, the, it's, it's a building. This whole thing probably weighs between six and eight tons and would have been a major, major undertaking to just install this. If you look carefully at it, um, you can see that it's made up of a number of separate pieces that have all been jointed and built together, just as a building is built. So this is a major gesture on behalf of somebody who wants to be remembered. And the cost of it in the time was unbelievable. It's more than a Ferrari. The two figures that are, that are the, the subjects that are to be remembered, um, the, these would have been um, two colossal blocks of, 
uh, white marble that would have probably, before they were carved, would have weighed about three tonnes. The people that made this wouldn't have the kind of lifting equipment that, that we have now. So you just think about what's involved in, in moving these, <laughs> these things that are heavier than your car. I mean, you saw me working in the, in the studio with the kind of tools that I use, and it was a tiny piece of work. But this, this is physical, um, hard work that these people would have had to, had to have work into these blocks of marble. And, um, you know, if you can, excuse me, sir, if you can put your hands inside here, you can feel the rough uh, surface where they would, have, they would have used a tool called a punch to rough out in here, but the, the work involved in going right up there is phenomenal. You saw me using rifflers, those little files on the gloves that I was carving. Well, if you look here, you can see these marks on, on this part of the hand there. And I think that's, I think that's of the time that it was made. And that's somebody using exactly the same tool as I, I was using the other day, about 500 years ago. Have a look at the headstones in the churchyard. There's, there's a wealth of really good Victorian stones um, all around me. Uh, some of them are in really good condition, so you, you've got very, very crisp, well-executed lettering. They all tell a story, see what you can find, but if you just look at that stone behind me that I'm pointing at with the triangular top, that's a memorial that includes the death of three children in 1826, one day after another. So that's three children in three days. Right, this stone's about the same age as that stone that I was leaning on, which is about 10 feet over there. And look at it, it's, uh, this is subject to wind erosion and it's just the position in the churchyard. There may be, it may be a softer stone than, than the other stone, but uh, it's remarkable, just that difference of a few feet where this, this is subject to such greater, stronger winds. But, uh, and, it, and look, at the, look at the pattern that, that you've got from these deeper uh, marks in it uh, would have been where, where the, the carved letters were. Look at the stone. I mean, there's, there's just remnants of the inscription on this edge here. It's even still got the paint in, the black paint to pick out the inscribed letters.